1944, and Europe is a battlefield. The Nazis under Adolf Hitler have marched through France, Amsterdam, Poland, and left in their wake a trail of devastation and ruin. With the exception of Switzerland, only one other country retained its neutrality, the small independent state of Lutonia, located, as the Lutonians put it, on the dark side of the Balkans. Here, in this land totally devoid of trees, life goes on happily for the Schmengi family. It is in this pastoral environment of complete contentment and peace that Josh and Stan Schmengi spent their formative years. Although the boys were too young to work, they were, even at the age of seven, driven by a burning ambition to be something and fueled by the infinite amount of attention afforded them by their parents, they found themselves in the role of performers, a role unbeknownst to them that would take the name of Schmengi to ethereal heights, to greatness beyond their wildest dreams. Never seen them in person, wouldn't have missed it for the world. The Smickies played at our wedding, so you can see there's a, a sentimental attachment. There they kings, now they abdicating. I think I have every record the Schmengis put out. I've never seen them live. This concert tonight will be one of the most memorable nights of my life. It's sad to see them go. We've been in line 18 hours. <laughs> we leave our husbands at home. We tell them you want bologna, it's in the fridge, there is bread. You want to eat, you know where to get it. We're going to see Yash instead. <laughs> Before coming into the office, I usually stop at the Lumpis which is a small Lutonian bakery across the street. And uh, I would have coffee and a raisin surprise ball, which is a large lump of dough with uh, sometimes you find the raisin in it and sometimes not. That was the surprise. I sitting at my usual table one day when who walks in the door but Josh and Stan. Well, to make a long story short, they go to the counter, they place their order, and tell the waitress to carry their balls and coffee over to my table. And they sit down. They ask, uh, did I find the raisin in my surprise ball? And I say, I did. And they said that uh, they hoped they would find the raisin in their surprise balls. Uh, it was, you know, small talk. I am as close to them as anyone. And to this day, I'll never know why they retired. Maybe it's personal problems. Maybe problems with their family. A strain on their marriage. We hope so, anyway. To make a long story short, they asked me, did I know around here a place, it was a good place to go fishing? And I think to myself, uh, I know Yash and Stan many years, and they don't even eat fish. Why did they retire? Can I be honest with you? I don't care. And it's not because I'm bitter. They're comfortable financially. I don't know. It's gotta be the question of the year. To make a long story short, I say to them, Josh and Stan, how you find time to go fishing with your schedule? And they said to me, what schedule? And I realized, and it hit me, these two legends were hanging up their lederhosen and calling it quits. I'm Josh And I'm Stan Schmengi. And we're the Happy Wonders. <laughs>
That concert to me will always be one of the big highlights of my life. To have all our friends and family there made it all so special. And to play our hit tunes for the last time with the Happy Wonders Band. Well, it was almost a moving experience. When people ask me why Yash and myself retired so suddenly, you know what I tell them? I say no comment. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> that cracks him up all the time. No comment. Every time he says it. <laughs> anyway, Stan is right, you know. Because it doesn't matter why we retire, that's nobody's business. But the thing is, we had fun along the way. That's the important thing, that we had some laughs and some good times. And some bad times. Oh, some bad times, but more good times. Oh, yes, more of them. The music business has been good to us. We've made lots of money. Oh, yeah, lots of money. You know, we were able to pay off both our homes. And, uh, it, you know, I got a house just a few doors down from... Uh, from the, you Just can't see it, tree. yeah, the trees in the way. But it's a nice house, you Very know. Nice. I don't know if it's as nice as Stan's. Oh, it's just as nice. You Beautiful think it is? Home, yes. Oh, thanks, because yours is a great place, you Thank know. You. But the, the thing now that we have the time to spend with our families and do other things that we didn't have the time to do before. Like spending time with the families. Yeah, that's one. That's one. Looking back over our illustrious career, what with the fame and the money and the groupies, that only in America could two Latonians with such humble beginnings make it to the top. Because I'll tell you, back in Lutonia, we didn't have too much, just music and cabbages. The Schmengi's career started at the age of seven, when they began honing an act which, for the first time, included music. They were perfecting a homemade sound, modeled after their first musical influence, Lionel Hampton. These instruments were called gelkis, which in English means jars. And they were like the xylophone. You see, back in Latonia, the only records we could get were the Lionel Hampton records. Don't ask me why. So all the kids would play the Geld Kids so they could be like Lionel Hampton and his xylophone. And you see, the kids that got to be the best on the Geld Kids would go on the, uh, on the vaudeville tour. Children were the mainstay of Lutonian vaudeville, and two good Geld Kids players commanded top price and top billing. Because young Yash couldn't hit a jar without smashing it, the Schmengis were at a disadvantage. They had to find something for Yash to do while his brother Stan dazzled the audience on the Gelkis. A variation on the Cossack dance was Yash's first attempt to save the act. They would have achieved mild success at best had it not been for one thing. His name was the Amazing Rollo. He played the Geld Keys and did the Cossack dance at the same time. He was very popular. To this day, we've never seen anything quite like it. The Schmengis would try it again. Stan and Jolie was an act that was finished before it started. It never got off the ground. Professor Schmengi and his school of sardines was reviewed by one Lutonian critic as an act with no future. Finally, in the spring of 1945, Josh and Stan premiered their new act, which took Lutonian vaudeville by storm, Stan Schmengi and Houdini's Ghost. It was a hit, and it catapulted the Schmengis to top billing on the circuit. But fate reared its ugly head three months later. Lutonia was brought into the war against the Nazis. The military needed jars. In the summer of 1945, all glass jars in the country were seized, crippling vaudeville in Lutonia, and along with it, the dream of fame and success for Gelke's performers like Stan Schmengi and many others. I was managing this uh, resort hotel outside Belgic in Lutonia. It was 1952 and our headline act had canceled at the last minute. The Amazing Rollo was his name, and he was a virtual one-man show, very popular. Well, it was heavy tourist season. I didn't know what to do. I needed a show. All of a sudden, these two young teenagers show up. 
They couldn't have been more than 15. They called themselves Stan Schmenge and Houdini's Ghost. One of them played the concertina, while the other one hung upside down and tried to escape from a straitjacket. I put them on that night, and the crowd loved them. They were a smash. But toward the end of the show, the rope holding Houdini snapped, and he fell right on his head. It was terrible. We thought he was dead. So in order to make the fall look like part of the act, Stan continued to play the concertina, you know, really selling it, while we rushed Yosh off the stage and to the hospital. The following day, I took up to Yosh an old instrument that I'd found lying around the house and told him this should be far less dangerous. Unless, of course, for some reason, you can't find your mouth and poke yourself in the eye with it. <laughs> and that was the beginning of the Schmenge brothers, as we now know them. It's foreigners on parade! Yes, Farrell's Foot Cream and the fine family of Farrell's Foot Products brings you foreigners on parade! And here, live from Studio 8H at our ABS Radio Studios, the star of our show and one of America's leading talent agents, Colonel Tom Cohen! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we have some wonderfully talented foreigners on our show tonight. Well, he was a big agent at one time. But uh, he was blackballed by the Hollywood community for what they labeled uh, unethical business practices. Anyways, he had this amateur show on the radio. Uh, and these foreigners used to come on, you know, for nothing, uh, for no money, and compete for the top prize, which was exclusive representation by the colonel himself. And uh, considering that most of these immigrants couldn't hardly speak English, <laughs> that was a damn good prize. Because despite what the Hollywood community had to say about him, my husband was the best agent in the business. A real smart man. And uh, the Schmenge brothers, whom I'm sure had just gotten off the boat, <laughs> they appeared on one of these shows. Boys, that was terrific. Listen to the audience. That was the Schmenge brothers. Schmenge. I'm sorry. Schmenge. Oh, Schmenge brothers. Well, whatever the name, I want to sign you to exclusive representation. How about that? Thank you, Mr. Cole. Hey, thank you very much. It was their first taste of big-time showbiz. They won the top prize that night. <laughs> and let's face it, coming from a family of cabbage pickers, it had to be the biggest night of their life. They signed the contract the next day. He took them out. He wined them, he dined them, he showed them the town. He was real good to those boys. They even played at our wedding, which I thought was real nice of them, considering the colonel was taking a lot of heat for it, seeing as I was just... <laughs> 14 at the time. But they did it because they liked the guy. He got them a lot of work. And they were with him until his untimely and mysterious death, which I'm not going to talk about here, so don't even ask. Most agents would charge 10% commission, but uh, the colonel, he charged 75% commission, and the rest of our money he looked after. And it wasn't until after his somewhat mysterious death that we realized we didn't have no money left. No, because he robbed us blind is what he did. And then we didn't know what the hell to do because he was our agent. We didn't know. He was our agent, and you need an agent. You got to have an agent. He, in some agents have agents <laughs> in the Hollywood. Oh, yeah, there. But it wasn't until after his mysterious death that we realized, why do we need an agent? to lose our money for us, we can lose it ourselves. That's right, you know, because if we had our own agency, we don't have to pay the 75% commission. We could charge ourselves the 50% commission is all. So that's what we did. We became our own agents, and getting the work was a lot easier, especially in the TV. It strikes, spares, and schmangies. <laughs> Okay. 
Dimitri's of that was a close one. Of course, we speak of Rocky Dimitri, who's bound for zip seat colors. Welcome back, Rocky. But the champion, I bet you you hope that this week you are going to be the champion too, don't you? Right. No, yeah, I bet. Therefore, winning the $10 prize. Whoa. But if our bowlers get a strike or a spare in the lucky frame, then they can win $5,000. $5,000, and all you got to do to get it is to bow the strike or the spare in the lucky frame. And what is the lucky frame today, Ash? I don't have the number. Can you leave it up? Sorry. Maybe it's... It's the seven. Seven! The lucky frame is seven! You know, the lucky frame was a big selling point for the show. And since we are just local, you know, back then that was a lot of money. And being the producers, we would have to put up the $5,000. So that's where the music came in. And this is it, the lucky frame, number seven. If lucky teammates can get the strike or spare, you win the five thousand dollar prize. Look at the concentration. Five thousand dollars. But the pressure. Oh, what a shame. Oh, he missed. I first encountered Yash and Stan. Uh, when we were all still with uh, Colonel Tom Cohen. And after Colonel Tom died, well, it was a very sad, sudden, and mysterious death, as you know, I continued to be represented by his wife, Vicky, who at the time was 15. A wonderful girl, but very advanced for her age in, well, you know, the kind of ways. I mean, she had been there and back. And anyway, I was happy with her. She looked after me in many ways. and. Uh, I remember one time Yashan Stan came to a show of mine at the El Sahara, which is a falafel place, uh, and uh, they have wonderful uh, baba ganoush and carrot juice there fresh. And uh, they said to me, do you want us to represent you for 50% commission? And I at the time was paying Vicky 75% and she 75 and she was busy with her running her new escort service. So I went with the Ashen Stan at the time for 50% and I've been with them ever since. And they, they look after me, they're good friends and they do everything for me. They do everything from the uh, costume to uh, to the charts, which is why I can sing and you can back me up so well, because the music is done by their people and I, I pay for it, but they do it. You all remember Lynn Spinnier? Thank you, I just got back from the road again. I just got back from the road again. I'd love to stay. Chicago, Dallas, all the big cities. So 
Someday I would love to play the big cities in the major venues. But now my life is on the road again. On the road singing the music I love to sing. It's so nice to be back with Yashin Stan Schmengi here tonight. You know, music is my life, the road, the music, the artists whose music I sing. It means so much to me to bring this to you. One artist especially who's meant so much to me all these years, whose music I love and really relate to more than anything else. Someday I'd like to do something major with this music. Maybe a film, I don't know. It would be nice to get the rights to all of that music so I could uh, do something big. But I'm trying to get the negotiation now. Come on, touch me, babe. Can't you see that I am not afraid? What was that promise that she made? Why don't she tell me what she said? What was that promise that she made? I'm going to love you till the heavens start to rain. I'm going to love you till the stars fall from the sky. For you and I. For you and I. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Stand by. We're on the air in three, two, one. Good evening. The long-awaited arrival of the Schmengis finally happened today as Oktoberfest officially got underway. I'm Gord Markle, and I'll have a complete report on that. Doug Knox will have news on the international scene. Lisa Barlow with the goings-on at City Hall. John Phipps with the business report. Daryl Shure with tonight's Crime Stoppers feature. Mickey Gelman with the world of sports. Uncle Walter with tonight's weather. Susan Trumbull with the buyer and seller's report. Doug Peel with our community at large segment. Joan Dow with the Dow Jones. Earl Glover with tonight's Focus on You segment, and entertainment editor Mitzi Duke with two very special guests, the Grand Marshals of this year's Oktoberfest, Polka Meisters Yash and Stan Schmengi. But first, opening ceremonies for this year's Oktoberfest officially got underway today with the arrival of its guests of honor. Here are Yash and Stan, the Schmengi brothers. Happy Oktoberfest, you're on the air. Hello, Ted. I'd like to talk to the Schmengis. Go ahead. First of all, I'd like to welcome Josh and Stan to Oktoberfest. Oh, thank, thank you. you very much. It's nice to be here. Thank you. And I'd like to add that I think it's high time that you two were asked to be the guests of honor and be the Grand Marshals in our Oktoberfest parade. Oh, isn't that kind of you? Thank you so much for saying that. Yeah, it's been a dream of ours since we were kids. Oh, yeah. In the world of polka music, you literally have to be inducted into the Polka Hall of Fame before you know you have the respect of your peers. There are no Polka Awards, uh, no Academy Awards, or Country and Cowboy Awards, or TV Choice Awards. And to make a long story short, to be chosen to be guests of honor at Oktoberfest, the largest polka fest in the world outside the original in Munich, this this is the highest honor you can get in the field. Well, in case you've just tuned in, our guests today, Yash and Stan Schmengi, of course, this year's honorary guests at the Oktoberfest Parade. And our phone lines are open, 555-7176. Let me ask you guys something. How does it feel to be famous? 
I mean, I myself have some degree of notoriety here on the Ted Wellington Show on CKM and beautiful downtown Kitchener, but I'm talking about the capital F kind of fame, the I want to live forever kind of fame that the two of you have achieved over the years. How does it feel? And more important than that, has it changed your lives? Well, that's... That's a good question. That is a good question. I don't think we've been asked that one before. No, that's a good question, you know that? And let me just say to you, Ted, that in all honesty, boy, you know, I don't think that, 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 that this has affected me, this success thing has affected me at all. You know, other, other side of it, you know, I think that I, I'm just a normal, ordinary person. I like you, like you, you know. That's ordinary. right. I, I don't think that our lives have changed so much, Ted. You know, I think that we've made some music that that has made us lots of money, oh, let's yeah. be honest. But I don't think that... I, I feel like we're just two normal guys. Well, let me read a little bit of bio that I've got here on you two normal guys. Over a career that has so far spanned 30 years, the Schmengi brothers have released 88 LPs. Count them, 88. They've had five hit singles, including Who Stole the Cabbage Roll, the million seller that found the country's funny bone back in 1961. They've had seven television shows, the last of which, The Happy Wanderer's Polka Hour, is still on the air. They own a talent agency, a travel agency, a chain of cabbage roll and coffee wagons. I mean, you guys have just about done it all. Okay, let's go to line two. Happy Oktoberfest, you're on the air. Yes, Ted, I have a question for Stan Schmengi. Sure, uh, Which one of you guys is the brains of the outfit? Uh, 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 the brains of the outfit. <laughs> well, you know, I always say that two heads are better than one, so I'd have to say that we're both the brains of the outfit. <laughs> no, seriously, which one is smarter? I'd say Yash. Thanks for your call. There are two people who that we'd like to thank and pay tribute to it this time, because without them, we wouldn't standing up here today. Uh, speak, of course, of our, of our bank managers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just bank kidding. Manager. I'm just kidding. That's mm -hmm. another joke, yeah. Our wives, B and Muka. This our wives. wives, ladies and gentlemen. There you stand go. up, dear. Hey, Muka, stand up. You are? <laughs> One, two, three, four! <laughs>
start on the Polka Variety Hour with Yoshan Stan. It was our first professional job. And in the beginning, we were intimated by them because they were the Schmingi brothers. They were big stars and we were young and vulnerable. But they saw something in us. Talent. And they wanted us to appear weekly with them, which we did for two years. Three microphones for three lovely ladies. The Lehman Twins. The Schmengis recorded five albums with the Lemon Twins. That was at a time, of course, when the Schmengis were at a peak. They were at the height of their popularity, at least as far as their record sales were concerned. They were putting out, oh, about one album a month. In fact, there was a time when Schmengi albums took up this entire rack. I mean, it was all Schmengi, right from here, right to the back wall. Next to Perry Como, I had more of their records in stock than the top 50 groups put together. But the albums they recorded with the Lemon Twins, <laughs> the hotcakes, I couldn't order them in fast enough. It was unbelievable. Of course, the uh, rumor that they were romantically involved didn't hurt sales either. It was a scandal, that's what it was. Those two happily married men were constantly being seen with these women. And they didn't exactly go out of their way to avoid public places. And it was this, more than anything, that distressed those of us who knew them well. Uh, and not only that, there were three of them. Three women and two men. That was also distressing. And it was a terrible time for their poor wives who suspected an affair was going on, but never, ever raised the question of infidelity, because Lutonian wives believed it was not their place to do so. Oh, it's a crazy business. Come on, there's a syndrome in this business. It's so easy to get hooked on, on, the, on women or the pills or booze or drugs or dope. In my case, I, it's food. I can understand how Yash and Stan could get mixed up with the lemons. They were attractive girls, they could sing reasonably well, and not to mention the publicity you get out of a scandal these days, it's like a money-making machine. When they were with them, the four albums that they did with the Lemons sold so well, but when the scandal died down, the next album didn't sell, so they dropped them like a hot lemon, so to speak. <laughs> Oh! 
Schmengis are worth two, maybe three hundred thousand. Now, that's not chicken fees, but it's not superstar money. And the problem is, and always has been, polka music. A good sale is 5,000 copies. Platinum is maybe 7,500. I mean, there was a time that Schmengis were putting out an album a month. They were actually losing money. They weren't making enough in profits to cover the cost of their next album. I said, look, slow down. We can't afford another hit. <laughs> but the irony is, for two guys who care as much about money as the Schmengis do, it was only recently that it finally sunk in that the big money in records is with the kids. How many? Give me three. The big money is in rock and roll. And if you can swing that corner of the market over to polka music, bingo. Jackpot. Little children hate to swallow the aspirin, so how do you give the aspirins to the little children? You put the aspirins in some ice cream, and then you give the ice cream to the children. So that's what I wanted to do with the polka music, to jazz it up with some hip music so that the polka music would be hip also. But Yash, you know, my brother, he, he's more old-fashioned. He didn't like that idea too much. It took me months to convince him of the idea. You know, my brother Stan is a damn fine accordion player, but he doesn't have the vision it takes in the business, really, to make the music hip. It's a shame, really, for the children, because they're missing not buying polka music. They're missing out, I don't know. It, it's not the money so much I'm thinking of, but it's just a shame. You know, Stan always says, you know, how do we get him to buy the polka music? How can they be hip? <laughs> well, how do you get the little small children to swallow the aspirin, huh? from the beginning that we wanted to open the show with the lasers. The laser sword fight, we said that a week ago. And now you tell us at the last minute that we can't even do it? Listen, there's 12,000 seats out there. Believe me, these things are not going to read. I mean, it's not like they're real lasers. The visual yeah. impact uh, those things just won't read. I mean, look at them. They're toys. Uh, are you... You guys are going for a look that you can't afford. If you want a light show, then give them a light show. But we can't get you what you want by tonight. You can't. Possible. It's not going to happen. Well, I don't know. I think that they're pretty, pretty effective. Wait a minute. What are you doing? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, All oh, these chairs have got to be moved back. They're already 15 yards from the stage. No, but there's no, there's not enough room for the dancing here. We need more space. Wait a minute. You want dancing here with 12,000 kids? Yeah, you got, we got to have a dance floor. What's the point in bringing the kids out if they can't poker? There's no room. Bring them back. Come on, all the way back, back, OK? Not, Today, back, not tomorrow. Back. And quit crumbling. Can I say we go with the laser sword? I think that you are right. You know, it's good to start early in the show to reveal that, you know, this is our new image. To, to, to show the hipness of it all. Absolutely. I think that I say we go with the oh. sword. Oh. Big show tonight. Hey, gonna be a good one. Laser show. Ooh. Uh, I seem to have forgotten what point I was trying to make. The Plattsburgh concert, Th the audacity of such an act was repugnant, certainly to those of us in the polka business. To do it for fun, well, that's one thing. But the Schmengis were so intense about this new career move of theirs, I believe they actually thought they were Michael Jackson. <laughs>
That night will always be remembered as the Plattsburgh disaster. It was a bad idea, and those two guys are really lucky they weren't arrested for fraud. They had the gall to put up on an arena marquee Michael Jackson's name in big, bold print. And from the street, that's all you could see. Tonight only, Michael Jackson. The human eye couldn't see the teensy letters above the name which said, the Schmengi's salute. Only a fly on the marquee could read that. And it's no surprise the concert turned out the way it did. What's the matter? Did somebody die? Hey, you cheer up. Don't be the gloomy guy, sir. Look, Big uh, show. It's important. Oh, let's go outside then. We'll talk out there. Okay, everybody. Loosen up, but we'll be right back. Okay. Okay. We'll be right back. So what's, what's all the problem? Uh, we got a problem with the crowd. I knew it. We should have had more security for the crowd control. I told you we should. You get didn't so tell me nothing. You said don't no, bother. No, 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 fellas, fellas, it's not that. Well, what is it then? Well, uh, you know, there's an old axiom in show business that uh, when there's more people on the stage than there are in the house, you cancel the show. But there's only seven people on the stage. You mean there's less than seven people out there? Six. So the end result was that the Schmengi brothers' popularity and prestige took a definite downward spiral, and rightfully so. No, no, to, to try and cash in on someone else's success was a gutsy thing for Yash and Stan to do. You have to respect them for it. They saw something that was good, it was a trend, it's what the people want, and they went and they did it. You are, it's not such a terrible thing. It happens all the time in the business. It's show business. The record sales went down, the TV ratings dropped. To make a long story short, I think after the Plattsburgh disaster, the Schmenkies needed to do something positive for their image to get the people back on their side. And I think the only thing they could have done to restore people's faith in them again was to retire. It's a loss to the music business and the recording industry. And whatever people think is the reason for their retirement is not the point. The point is, they will be missed. To this day, I don't know why they retired. Some people say it was the Plattsburgh incident, but if you ask me, I, I don't have a clue. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Oh, what a great evening this was. What a good time, huh? Oh, we have a ball. Thank you so Amen. much. We have a ball. You know. Thank you so much. Well, this is it, Yash. This is the last time, Stan, and I just want to say to all you good folk who came out here tonight to see us off, to thank you for your support over the years, the way you stood by two Lutonian boys who came over here with nothing, and now you give us so much of yourself. We're indeed a rich men for that that you stood by us in our bad times. I think and what I Yash think. is trying to say. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm a baby. What Yash is trying to say, I think, can be summed up with our last song, a very last song, the last polka. It's for you.
You know, people say to us, is this the reason you retired or is that the reason you retired? Nobody to this day knows the reason why we retired. There's only two people who know the real reason why we retired. And that's Stan and myself. That's right. If, in fact, we really are retiring. Which we are. Oh, we are, yes. But what does retirement really mean? You know, think about it. It doesn't mean that everything has to stop. Oh, no, not in that sense, but... People might think that this was all a hoax if we didn't retire. Which they would if it weren't for the fact that we are retired and have been for the last two weeks. Two weeks. And I just got to say it's been the best two weeks of my life. Oh, a good two weeks. We've had lots of fun. But, you know, how long can you sit around and do nothing? You you get itchy to, to work. And make the money. And make the money. So maybe we will come back one day. Soon. We hope. But for now, no comment. comment.